Hi there, welcome back to My Hot Kitchen. I'm Wendy and we're cooking up romantic meals for you to make for your sweetie for a romantic night in. This week's romantic meal will start off with paper wrapped scallops. The entree will feature ahi ahi dressed up with Tracy's Polynesian sauce and avocado, coconut rice and delicious skewers to go along with it. So let's get started on the sauce first. You're gonna to wanna to start with between four to six ounces of pineapple juice and you wanna make sure that it's cold. Add to that a third cup of brown sugar, and here's where the fun starts. About a tablespoon of soy sauce, about an ounce of molasses, about an ounce of water, and then a tablespoon of cornstarch. Whisk this all together while your liquids are still cold. You want to whisk the cornstarch into the cold liquid so that it doesn't lump up as it cooks. Make sure the cornstarch is completely dissolved before you start applying heat to the sauce. Once you're satisfied that all the cornstarch has been whisked in and there's no lumps or residue left hanging out on the bottom of the pan, you can go ahead and turn on the heat. Use a nice medium high temperature and stay watchful because as it heats up, it's gonna to start to thicken and you'll wanna make sure that you're whisking it while it thickens so that you get a nice smooth consistency. And at this time, I'm also gonna add a little squeeze of chili sauce. Come on, chili sauce, there we go. And I'm gonna grate a whole clove of garlic into this as well. All right, and continue with the whisking. All right, well, that looks great. It's starting to take on a nice clear color. And you can really smell the aromatics of the garlic and the pineapple and the chili sauce working together. I'm just gonna give this a few more minutes here. It's really important that while you are cooking the sauce that you're whisking it almost constantly so that you're keeping the cornstarch engaged in the sauce and it doesn't scorch. I'm just gonna pull back on the whisking for a second just to make sure that I'm getting some boiling action. All right, that's how I know that the cornstarch's flavor is completely cooked out and it is all set and ready to go. So I'm gonna take it out of my hot pan here, pour it into a little measuring cup off to the side. Mmm, love this stuff. Alrighty. And then it's time to make the paper wrap scallops. Alright, now it's time to get the scallops out of the fridge. As I'm sure you know, scallops are quite perishable, so you want to keep them in the fridge until the moment that you're ready to use them. And this is going to be a fun little dish. You know, traditionally, paper wrap chicken is something that you can find at a lot of Asian restaurants on a popo -po platter. So, and we figured why not change it up a little bit and try paper wrap scallops. What I'm gonna do here is just lay out 10 pieces of foil for my 10 scallops. And I have them cut in rectangles or squares. And then, take my scallops and put them on the squares. Then we're gonna love them up with some mushrooms and some green onions and a little, little squirt of the sauce. All right, back over with the green onions and mushrooms. Just a few per scallop will do the trick. You know, you're just trying to add a little flavor here. You don't wanna overwhelm it. Slice or two of mushroom. The most traditional method of preparation for a paper wrapped dish like this is to actually wrap them up in a butcher paper or parchment and deep fry them in a wok. Um, not really my favorite thing to do here. So what I'm gonna do is actually bake them in the oven. I'll keep them a little bit leaner and I'll keep the mess down as well. A little sauce on each one. Excellent. And then just kind of fold them up in little cute triangles, tuck them in, tuck down the ends so that they're sealed up nice and tightly. And 
set them in a baking sheet. Just draw the corners together and seal off the ends really well. And the end result is going to be a very moist, flavorful, tasty little scallop. Crimp it down. There we go. Alrighty, and the last one goes into the pan. Now, since I've just been playing around with raw scallops, I'm going to wash my hands really quick here. Alrighty, and now it's time to get the rice going. So I have about a cup and a half here of coconut milk. And I definitely prefer to work with the full fat coconut milk. It has a much better flavor and texture to it. Go ahead and make sure that I'm getting all of that out of the bowl because it's really important for the consistency of the rice to get all of the liquid in there. And what I'm going to do is bring it up to a boil and then I will add the rice. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. Give it a little stir here. My coconut milk has come up to a boil. So at this point I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of rice. I'm using my favorite rice, jasmine rice. Any sort of long grain rice that you like to use will work great for this dish. And a nice generous amount of salt. Give it a little stir. And what you want to do is make sure that you have about one and a half times the volume of liquid in proportion to your rice. So you can add a little water or pineapple juice if you're seeing that your proportions are not correct. I'm adding just a splash of pineapple juice. I'm going to stir it again. Put a lid on it and reduce the heat. Bring it down to a nice low simmer for about 20 minutes. All right, I bet you those scallops are done. They smell so good. Can't wait to eat them. Let's see. And as I'm poking at them, I can feel that they're kind of firm to the touch. That's just right. There we go. Plate these up. All right, let's take a look in here and just see what we made. Yummy. That looks really good. I can't wait for my sweetie to enjoy that. Hmm. What smells so good? Oh, hey, paper wrap scallops. Yum. Yeah. Huh? Oh my God. She showed you the stuff. Hmm. <laughs> go for it. Mm. Yay. Oh, that's pure heaven. Mm. Let's go. Okay. All righty. It's time to get the skewers started. That also means the grill and the fan. So anyway, I have some bamboo skewers here. I've soaked them in water so they'll be more receptive to the heat. And I'm just gonna skewer up some pineapple, red peppers, tomatillos, and onion together. Keep it real simple, keep it colorful. There we go. And you can use whatever sort of combination of fruit and vegetables that you like here, you know? Don't get too fussy with it. Just put it on a stick and throw it on the grill. Your sweetie will be stunned and amazed. All right, one down, a few to go. All right, four gorgeous skewers. Just love the way the colors play off each other. I'm gonna brush them with just a little bit of olive oil here. Make sure they don't dry out while they're roasting. And I would suggest keeping the heat on a medium high. Not cranked all the way up, but not turned all the way down either. We're on fire. I like it. Give them a little rotation and make sure I brush the other sides as well. Oh, these are smelling really, really good. 
Now, if you keep a bottle of water handy, you can spray down those flames. So nobody wants a fire in their kitchen on their romantic evening. Now that those are going, I'm going to go ahead and get the mahi-mahi cooking. Couple nice fillets of mahi-mahi here. And you can also substitute red snapper or even halibut for the mahi-mahi and get a nice result. Out of here, put them into my baking pan. Put some pineapple juice over them. quite all right if they're sitting in a little bath. That's just going to add to the flavor. And then sprinkle a little green onion and cilantro over the top. All right, and then put these guys in the oven. Now baking time is going to vary based on your oven, the type of fish, and how thick the fish is. These guys aren't that thick, so I'm going to say about 8 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, back over here to these tasty little things. Just rotate them periodically so that you get a nice slow roast on the vegetables. That really brings out their natural flavors. Brush them with olive oil as needed to keep them from getting dry. Alrighty, and while everything's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get the very last step, the magnificent avocado garnish that's going to go on top of the mahi-mahi. Come on, cut. There we go. You probably need one or two avocados, just depends on how big they are. These guys are kind of small, so I'm going to go ahead and indulge in an avocado each. So I'm just working my knife around the outside here. Oh, excellent. And removing the pits. And then I'm scooping them out of the skins with a spoon. Set them face down on my cutting board here. And you want to get the avocados when they're nice and soft, but not squishy to the touch. It's when they're at the peak of flavor. Make sure you remove any remnants of the stem that may have found their way into the avocado. Line them up and slice them up. Slice them nice and long so that they cover the whole fish. And I'm just going to leave these here until I'm ready to garnish. In the meantime, keep on rotating your skewers. Go for that nice slow roasted flavor. The sweetness of the pineapple, the sweet spice of the pepper, they're going to be very nice together. Alrighty, just flipping the skewers one more time here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the fish out of the oven. And I'm going to do a two-part process with it. So it's had some time to bake in the pineapple juice with the herbs on it. Now, let's give it a chance to caramelize a little bit. So I'm going to take it out of the pan and gently set it on my hot grill here. Excellent. I'm going to be careful with this process because you don't want it to flake apart on you. There we go. Nice easy touch putting it presentation side down so that your sweetie gets to enjoy the beautiful fish. And then just give it a couple minutes and let the colors kind of caramelize a little bit so that when you present it to your sweetie, it's gorgeous and beautiful. While the mahi-mahi finishes off, I'm going to go ahead and get started on plating. I'm going to start by slightly fluffing my coconut rice here. Starting with that on the plate first. Nice little scoop there. That looks pretty and yummy. That turned out a nice color. Okay, and then it looks like I can start pulling the skewers off the grill as well. Hmm, those look yummy. 
All righty, and let's take a little look at the fish. And see if it is ready. Oh, good. Yeah, it's got a little color on it. Go ahead and take this off. Gently put it on the plate. Okay. Moving on to the other one here. Oh, I can't wait to share this meal with my sweetie. He's actually the one that originated the sauce. A little avocado. He just started mixing a whole bunch of tasty ingredients together. And then voila, Tracy's Polynesian sauce was created. A little avocado over the top. And I remember the Polynesian sauce because I was like, oh my gosh, that is so good. We gotta write that down right now. And then the rest is history. Cool. All right, once you have garnished the fish with the avocado, bring on the, tr the Tracy's Polynesian sauce. And I would describe the flavor of this sauce as somewhere between a teriyaki and a jerk sauce. It goes really well with avocados. These pretty little guys are ready to go on the table. Turn off that noisy fan for a romantic evening. Well, that was a fun, tangy, and flavorful meal you just whipped up for your sweetie. And always remember, the best ingredient is a whole lot of love cooked right into the food. Now call in your sweetie and show them what you did. Don't need this anymore. Honey. Hi, handsome. Yeah. Oh, you look hey. great. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks so good. Mm -hmm. hey, is that my sauce? I made your sauce. Awesome. But I made it my way. <laughs> So thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen, and I'll see you next week. Night night.